finally got my can of Mr. Muscle. This is reputed to be the best oven cleaner for stripping parts. These parts have had a couple of treatments of Easy Off. The noise in the background is my propane torpedo heater running. It's very cold here today. And it's almost got the garage up to temperature. Still got little bits of paint here and there. I think uh, I think the uh, Easy Off is a probably a pretty good stripper. I noticed the factory, the original factory gray on here is pretty tenacious. I got most of it off, but I can still see some of it here. right in there up here added some uh, Dawn dish soap to my water here hoping to get rid of any oil as we go so it doesn't foul up my painting when that time comes I know if I get rid of all this paint won't have any regrets later. If I leave a little bit of it there, I worry about it containing some stripper. The remnants of the stripper. And that that might later cause my, uh, my red paint to peel. So I'm probably going to give these one one treatment with the Mr. Muscle and see if it gets rid of the rest of this. If there's any left, I'm probably just going to live with it. I'm not restoring the lathe for Barrett Jackson after all. I know when I see these parts with color on them for the first time, I'm going to get really excited. It's going to give me the energy I need to enthusiasm to keep it going. These cross slide parts I've only seen, I think, Two easy off treatments. Still a little bit of oil on them. I wonder how much wear on a lathe over the years comes from fine grit and grime getting in the lubricants. And just being there and every time you move the slide back and forth there's a little bit of wear. Still think I just think it's a good idea to clean all of that and start fresh and new. And I've noticed from washing these there hasn't been any increase in rust. Of course I scrub it down and dry it off. Don't let it set wet. I'm wondering if there's uh, the pH nature or whether water's been through a treatment plant or not has any impact on how quickly it rusts. I don't know, but I'm on well water here. I do have a water softener. I assume there must be some some small amount of salt in my water, but I'm not seeing any uh, any increase in surface rust or discoloration of any kind. Really, a lot of that could be just because I'm scrubbing on these with a wire brush. I don't know, I think these are so nice I can just go ahead and paint them. A little depression there, like that's been dropped on the edge at one time or another. It doesn't seem to be on any bearing surfaces. Still, wherever you have a depression, you might have an anthill at the edge of it, so I'll probably lightly stone all this stuff off before I complete it. One of the things I'm shopping for is a bench grinder. I could obviously use a bench grinder to do a lot of this, make it quicker. I own a bench grinder, but it's at work. I needed it in my business years ago and hauled it up there. And it's got a wire wheel on it. And I 
the technician uses it to clean the scale off of the soldering irons. So I need to leave it there. So right now I'm shopping for some kind of vintage uh, machine shop quality grinder. I think I'd rather, rather than buying some new junky grinder, I'd rather some China crap, I'd rather restore some vintage made in America good quality grinder. That's probably about as good as these parts are going to get. Get out a little bigger tool. This device will tighten or loosen a fastener. I'll put a lot of pressure on it and then strike it with a hammer and there's a spiral in here that gives it kind of a, uh, kind of makes it work like a, uh, I guess an air ratchet. You get a hammering hammering rotating force and I've got a nice big bit in it that fits the uh, fits the screw good. I'm going to hold it turning in the right direction there that's able to move it. Much less force I couldn't turn the screw without uh, the sensation that I was going to um, strip out of the head here before. And there is a place where someone's done that before, although that wasn't me. And I basically just have this sitting in the vise. It wasn't clamped up on it at all. So there we go. There's proper ways to do things so that you don't tear up fasteners. I may replace the fasteners in this lathe with uh, all socket head stuff. Back in the day, slot head screw was considered good quality, I guess. And I'm sure this is a high quality fastener, but there's no reason not to update the lathe. I think some people that do really high-end restorations, display lathe restorations, museum lathe restorations maybe, I think they take uh, body filler and go over these castings and fill all the little tiny holes and things. I'm making a lathe I can use. I don't want to worry about nicking it and scratching it. And besides, I may get obsessive if I started doing that. And, I might not ever get the project done. Someone once famously said, a man's got to know his limitations. That cavity's been the hardest place to work in. It's tempting to leave this part unpainted. When I look at some pictures, I see uh, that was originally unpainted or not. I think it had the gray paint on it. It's got a slot in it, which so I think it can be removed. I think it's threaded in there. Looks like I need a drag link socket or something like that to get it out. I'll have to look at my tools. Yeah, I'll do a little surfing and see if someone else is uh, taking one of those apart. It would seem like uh, the easiest way to manufacture that would be to press that part in. But that slot's what makes me think that it's possibly threaded in there. I've been changing my paper towels out frequently just in case I pick up a little bit of oil 
off of one of these. It's hard to tell. Is that paint or oil? I don't want to spread it to a bunch of other parts. Possibly have some oil on it before I paint it. I'll be spraying these off with brake cleaner, which is will be my last ditch attempt to remove any oil. Make sure I get it dry. Now after that comes out of there, it won't touch the outside of anything again.